Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my name is John Mark Hicks, and I am a professor at Lipscomb University and have been a minister in Churches of Christ for, oh, more than 40 years. And I'm happy to be here with my friend, Michael Brown. Hello, everybody. Uh, Michael Brown here, minister of the Westview Church of Christ in Huntsville. Uh, I've been in the ministry for a whole long time, and I've known uh, my good brother for a long time, even before that. So just grateful to have this opportunity to share conversation. Yes, Mike, Mike and I, who I call Doc, you know, he's an author and uh, he's a doctor. So um, I call him Doc. Doc and I have known each other, you know, since the, going back to the 70s when Absolutely. we both lived in the Philadelphia area in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I, you lived up in Trenton. I, I, lived, I lived in Trenton. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And I lived in Philadelphia. in Philadelphia at the, at the time. <laughs> but we've, uh, we've traveled some similar roads at times. We've, we've had our different roads as well, but we've, we've had some shared experiences. And, and one of those is uh, we've both uh, lost a spouse mm. uh, to death. I, my, um, my wife, Sheila, died in 1980. And this is on my heart because just the other day, uh, I was at the funeral and spoke at the funeral of Sheila's mother. Uh, she died 40 years after Sheila died. And uh, I spoke at her funeral on Tuesday, which just brought a lot of stuff up for me. And um, a lot of things I need to process and think about and work through. So I asked, I asked Doc if we could just talk about grief for a little bit and talk about our shared experiences here. So Doc, why don't you tell us about if uh, your, uh, your experience in, of grief? Sure, sure. Uh, I'll share two things because they are related. Um, the first one was in uh, 1999. Uh, 1999, my father passed away. Uh, he was 72 years old, uh, healthy as, as they say, as, uh, as healthy as a horse. Uh, but he got um, contracted uh, prostate cancer. And the prostate cancer uh, took him down over a five-year period. Uh, Dad was um, just as vibrant as all, uh, all get out, if you will. And that slowed him down, and then it eventually... It took his life. Now, my father was not a smoker, uh, not engaged in anything that would bring about the common diagnosis, if you will, for that type of an illness. And of course, we know more about it now than we did then. But my dad passed away then. Uh, and I wanted to mention that first because my father is the one that told my wife when she was uh, a young girl. <laughs> Uh, at the Church of Trenton that one day my son's going to marry you. Oh, and he wow. constantly said that. He constantly teased about that. And at the time, uh, she just thought he was crazy. And we're talking <laughs> about people that are, you know, at that time, my wife, uh, former wife, Linda, late wife, Linda, uh, she is the daughter of uh, the minister of the church in Trenton, Brother Clarence Matthews Sr. So anyway, we, we were together as kids. She was uh, 12, 13, I'm, I'm 14, uh, 13, 14. We eventually ended up getting married uh, in 1978, uh, and I was 19 and she was 18. Uh, we married then, and the um, Lord blessed us to be together for uh, 31 years. We had three children, and um, I, I couldn't have found a better wife uh, had I gone to heaven and asked for it. Uh, she was such a beautiful person, and uh, in my heart still is a beautiful person. I don't think we change from who we are when we leave this world. But we, we had those years together dating uh, as kids. Uh, you're talking about a school sweetheart. She was, she was that. And uh, in 19, or rather in um, 2008, uh, not long after I had finished uh, the program at um, Harding School of Theology, uh, we were there celebrating that in May. Uh, she took ill more toward November. She had a constant cough that the doctors thought was uh, bronchitis, and they gave us the normal treatments for things like that. So she was taking those treatments, and 
the cough didn't go away. Well, it continued to hold on to her uh, on throughout November and then throughout December. We took a trip home for Christmas to Trenton, New Jersey. We were living in Alabama at the time. We took a trip home to see family in December and seemingly things were better if the cough wasn't there as it had been. Uh, and then we were turning year into January. We had our plans for different things we were going to do and the cough came back. It become, became so consistent that we decided we needed to go for a, a second check. Her normal doctor's diagnosis wasn't satisfying anymore. Uh, we took a second check and uh, the doctor came back and he told us that she had lung cancer. Mm. That shocked us. Mm. And um, after all of the shock of that and many tears shed, we wanted to go for whatever aggressive treatment would be possible. So the doctor first said he wanted to check to see the degree, the severity of the cancer. We went back in and he checked her again. And in doing so, he found that it was stage four already. So both lungs had been infected. So from that time, from February through uh, the first part of May, uh, we were back and forth through chemo. Uh, we found a brother in Christ who was actually the one that was going to treat her with chemo. And um, he had a trial. We, we, he said, we have this new uh, medicine that we think is very aggressive. And I'd like to put her on that because this is quite severe. And we have to see whether or not she would qualify for that. Well, thankfully, she did qualify. We went into that treatment aggressively and continued that treatment uh, over from February, uh, March, uh, you know, through April, and um, we, were, we were getting that treatment. We went in after about, oh, I'm going to guess halfway through between February and April, somewhere in there, and we had another check for her, and the doctor said that there was no real change, mm -hmm. no matter what we had done. By then, I could see, uh, quite frankly, I could see her body withering away. Um, I used to write to my brothers and sisters in email and text all the time, and I would tell them as hopefully as I am, my, 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 my mind can't deny what my eyes see. Well, we finally got to the point where she couldn't stay home she had to be rushed back and forth to the hospital on several occasions because the pain was so severe. Uh, and so finally in the month of May, uh, the 7th, 8th of May, both days, of course, she's in the hospital a lot. I'm going, my job was wonderful to me. They let me take off. They let me work remotely and I could just sit in the hospital with her and sit in a room and I could work and we could talk. But it got to the point where her breathing had gotten so labored that they had to keep increasing the oxygen and to the point where it became maximum oxygen. So she could be there with me. She had the apparatus on. We would talk and we would talk. Uh, on the 8th, the doctor came in and uh, he told me about what the status was. He said, um, she's got a lot of things going on with her lungs. Um, and the sacs that were building up in the lungs were so strong that she couldn't get any air. But he said, I'm still, I'm still trying this. I'm trying this. I'm trying. Uh, I remember so vividly that evening I had been with her all day. We were in there all day watching the golden girls <laughs> and uh, holding hands and talking as much as she could. And he said, okay, I'm going to take her back and I'm going to try these, this treatment that I can kind of reach in, uh, and, and pop some of these sacks that are stopping her lungs from taking in air. And I told him, um, you know, well, I, I feel a little optimistic. Should I be? And he said, um, he said, well, she's got a lot going on. Well, uh, of course, I went to get something to eat, and they took her back, and they worked on these treatments. And I went to get some sleep, and they called me early in the morning. And I rushed to the hospital. My daughter and I had been there with her 
uh, the night before for a little while. And then, you know, we, we both left, got some sleep, got some sleep. They called me in the morning. I rushed to the hospital. And when I got there, it was too late. Uh, she had um, passed. She was on a machine that was allowing her to breathe, but it was really the machine that was breathing. And it got to the point where uh, there was just no response. Uh, they told me that she had flatlined three times. And um, when I got there, I was trying to rush to the room. And they told me um, there was nothing else. So the Lord called her home that morning. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a rough road. 11 years later, it's been a rough road dealing with that. But, uh, you know, God's been good. Yeah. And he's allowed us as a family to continue on. My children, my daughter-in-law, and uh, her family, of course, my family. We've known each other all our lives. And uh, that's that's the story of that. Yeah. Uh, it's the grace of God that keeps you going. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I, I was only married three years. You you had 31 years. Yes. And, um, yeah, I don't know that anyone, one way is, I mean, each is different, right? I mean, it's, it's That's a true. different experience. It's a different that is experience. definitely true. And there's grace in both experiences, and there's a lot of pain in oh, both. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. No yeah. doubt about it. So I want to ask you, as, as you struggled with grief mm -hmm. in, uh, in the aftermath of Laura's, of Laura's, right? Linda. Uh, Mm -hmm. Linda, that's right. Linda, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> no I'm problem. So sorry. No I, problem. I, I got it mixed up in my head. And pardon me. For Laura that, pardon pardon me for dabbing my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Laura was on my mind because that was Sheila's mom's. Really? Name. I love that. So Linda. Yeah. So I apologize for that. Uh, no, no worries. Um, but as uh, after L Linda's passing. Uh, what was it like for you? What 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 kind of emotions did you experience? What kind of relationship with God did you experience? I mean, what mm. what is the range of stuff you went you you experienced? I guess is what I'm asking. Wow, that's a great question. I'm really glad we're having this conversation. It's therapeutic. Um, I think the first few hours, for sure, I was I was in in a shock but not the shock of, I can't believe it. More of the shock of, now what do I do? Mm. I got in my car and uh, I just started driving when I left the hospital and I don't really know where I was going. After, oh, so many miles, I think I was halfway to Atlanta, <laughs> on my way to Atlanta, but um, I turned around because I heard the voice of my father in my mind telling me, uh, you got you to gotta deal with this. You can't run. So I went back, and uh, I think I was in a limbo state for a while there as my uh, children were trying to talk with me, my oldest son, uh, who was the bedrock for me. Uh, he called me, caught up with me, and he wanted to see what he could do. Uh, my younger son, as well, was trying to reach up to me, uh, but he was not living in the city at the time. He wasn't here in Huntsville. My daughter was living with me and she was right there all the time. So I felt that God was still there because I could feel his presence through my children. Hmm. And I could feel that sense of security from things that I had been hearing all my life about the goodness of God. That was probably for the first maybe month of the, uh, the grieving period. But then I must say that I entered an angry state. Hmm. I couldn't understand why God would allow that to happen. And yeah. I couldn't understand why her. I had planned all my life that I would be the one to pass first if hmm. we weren't going to pass near one another. Yeah. I built all my insurances, all my uh, investments, everything based on the fact that my wife and my children will be well taken care of. So hmm. my wife had never touched anything that would make you think she would have lung cancer. 
my Bel- brother-in-law. Let me I'm ask sorry? you about that first mm-hmm. stage before we start talking about the anger. Cause, cause I had a similar experience that, that first stage, it's like everything that had uh, that your faith and the formation of our faith over the years gives us this kind of buffer, you know, in that initial yes. moment. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of like Job, you know, Job at the beginning said, well, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. And, and there's a sense in which our, our worship and our faith and our community have taught us to, um, to receive from God, even in these dire moments, uh, however we might conceive that. And, it, and it's kind of a, a stability. Uh, it is. Those moments. It is. It's it a gives treasure. us a break. You know, yeah, yeah, and it's interesting you bring up Job. That was the first thing. Uh, in fact, I still today I think about Job's initial response, mm. and and then it dawns on me very quickly uh, how that response turned into something else. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's what that's what I hear you saying your experience was, and and that's was my experience as well. I mean, I had yeah. that initial. I don't know. if I went a month. I, I think maybe it was like more like a week for me. <laughs> mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. but it was that initial. Okay. I mean, I went to church the first Sunday after she died, you know, and that yes. sort of thing. And so I was still in the faith mode and still shock mode. I think shock, but but the the but the formed faith in my life enabled me to to walk in that shock, I guess, with a certain yeah. security of sorts. But then, as you said, like Job, we start thinking about this thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And we start, okay, what's up with that? You know, mm-hmm. what, what happened here? And what about the prayers I've been praying and about how I asked God to give a, a successful surgery and to preserve the life of my wife and, and my, and my wife's surgery, Sheila's surgery was not even life threatening surgery. It was kind of one of those one out of a hundred thousand sort of things. Wow. So it was totally unexpected. And so that when that shock wears off and that initial faith, we start ending up like Job in chapter three, where Job says, why was I even born? Right. You know, right. Why, let's just destroy the day of my birth. And let, you know, why am I still living? Because mm-hmm. um, all that I loved and cared about is gone now. You yeah. Know? yeah. Of course, you know, not all, but, but in, in hearing Job's language a little bit. Yeah. There. And it feels like all. It felt like all to me. Ah. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what, what in the world? What? I like how you expressed that because that was almost my exact words. And you know, what's up with that? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we, we played by the rules. Uh, absolutely. You there you go. I like that. I, I mean, that was kind of what I, um, you know, one of the big shifts that happened to me in grief was moving from kind of a mechanical understanding of God. And this is early in my understanding. Of course, I was 22 when Sheila died. Uh, I also married at 19. And just How like about that? Did. But <laughs> she was 22 when I married her. Oh, okay. <laughs> she okay. was a lot more mature than I was, by the way. <laughs> um, but that, that initial, uh, that, that move early in my, and it happened over a long period of time. It didn't happen immediately, but that move from kind of a mechanical, hey, you and I had a deal, God, right? Yes, exactly. We had a deal. I was we giving my life deal. to you. Right. And you betrayed me. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. I, and I had that feeling. Did you have that feeling of betrayal? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, you know, what, what more? When you play by the rules, look, we didn't do this. We didn't do that. We didn't do the other. So why would you do this? Mm. And I, I, that took a while to get out of. Mm. That took oh. a while to get out of. Yeah. And I think that some, some Christians would tell you, brother, that, uh, that you shouldn't have those feelings. That mm. that's not really the way you should think about this. I mean, how, yeah. how do you, how do you respond to that? Yeah. Uh, at the time I probably wouldn't have responded very, very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to sit where I am. before Yeah. You say something right. Like that, you know? Right. right. Okay. Uh, these days, you know, I, I think uh, what I've come to learn over these years is uh, God really doesn't owe you. Uh, hmm. It's not a matter of, as I used to say, we play by the rules. Why would you do this? It's more of a matter of look how good you were. 
Mm. uh, for 31 years. Look how good you were. And look at who you gave me that I realized I never deserved in the first place. And when people talk about uh, they're angry when something has happened with them and they're angry at God, I say, he's got, he's got big shoulders. Uh, Mm. He can take it. And he would much rather you be honest and speak what your heart is experiencing rather than give platitudes that you really don't believe. Uh, Yeah. I try to tell people to be real and you only grow in your relationship with God through the anger, through the pain, uh, whatever you want to say. It's not like you can't hear it and see it anyway. Uh, so share it. And I, I think, I believe it's therapeutic. I believe it's also, uh, I think it's faith strengthening when yeah, you get absolutely. on the other side of it. I like your word therapeutic there. I, I call it kind of a spiritual therapy. There's a kind of mm-hmm. a, a work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts when we groan, you yes. know, and the Spirit helps us groan, interprets our groaning, right? Yeah. So there, there is a therapy going on, and mm-hmm. it's God doing therapy. But as you said, we got to be honest with God about that. Yeah. We can't repress it or hide it or put on a smiley face for God. Uh, you know, this is what we call lament, right? And this is yes. Uh, lament is filled. I mean, the Bible is filled with lament. The Psalms mm-hmm. are full of mm-hmm. lament. Mm-hmm. And so you have, we have kind of a permission when somebody says, well, you shouldn't think about God like that or should talk to God like that. Well, I think we have permission to do that with all the oh, yes. lament Psalms that, that yeah. are in scripture and Jesus on the cross asking why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've had a lot of people you know, tell me, well, you shouldn't ask why. Well, Jesus did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. think I can follow that. And yeah, in the I, moments of hurt and pain, I, I can ask why because scripture asks why. The, the yeah. saints have asked why over and over and over again. Yeah, I, I think we have to. That, that uh, Bobby McFerrin, don't worry, be happy doesn't work. Ah, when, when, yeah. you, when you're dealing with that kind of a pain, it's right. Uh, I've learned, and I'm still learning, but I've learned to just let it loose. Mm. I had periods of getting in the car and just getting out some some remote rural areas and driving and just screaming and hollering and fussing. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. About you know why yeah, would yeah. you let this happen? I'll I'll quit the pulpit. I'll get out of uh, preaching. Why would I give myself to this when you've done this? Right. Um, and it took a lot of that uh, to, to get on the other side of it. Yeah, I, I like what you said there about remembering God is good. And, and when we're in the midst of that pain, it's hard to remember that. It uh, is. Because it feels so awful. You know? It yeah. feels so yeah. painful. But remembering that God is good, that, that's part of that trust factor. That when exactly. we lament, we, we also learn to trust. Yes. I trust that you're good, God. Uh, I don't... I don't really experience that right now <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I'm hurting so yeah. bad, but I trust that you're good. And I see that in Jesus. I see that you have my good in mind, that you mm-hmm. love me. I, you know, I can stand at the, at the coffin of my wife and I can doubt whether God loves me or not. And I did, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can't, I can't kneel at the foot of the cross and doubt that God loves right. me. Yeah. So learning how to lament and trust at the same time, I mean, that's, that's kind task. of the world of grief, isn't it? Yeah, it's a task. I think it's a, it's something that we continue to uh, evolve with uh, as, as we deal with it. Um, mm. For me, it was, I had to get away from this thought of betrayal Yeah. Uh, and, and get more to the idea of Thanksgiving. And even today, uh, you know, my wife's anniversary of leaving this world was, um, uh, but it's, it's it's eleven years and about a good good couple of months away uh, since that time. But today, and it's been a while now. I my prayer, my morning prayer begins with thanking him for mm. the time I had her, mm. and I, I really, in my heart, um, this thought of you gave me somebody that I didn't deserve that sticks wow. with me so strongly. Because it allows me to just thank him, uh, to thank him for all of that time when I shouldn't have it. I shouldn't have had any of it. Mm. And and uh, and I don't think about it in the sense of I was such a horrible person. No, that's not it. I I, I think of it from the standpoint of how good of a person she is and that beauty of spirit as well as outwardly. It just strikes me every day to say, thank you, Lord, for, for that great blessing. 
Mm. Wow. That's being grateful for Linda. That's, Oh yeah. yeah it's yeah, great. It's who I am. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, I get that. I get that. But learning how to be grateful in the midst of all this, uh, that really does reorient you a little bit. It and enables us to see, you know, God really is good because I do have a lot of things to be grateful for. Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you, did you, now I know that I, of course I, I remarried, uh, almost three years ago. Um, took a long time to even decide to do that. Uh, what were your thoughts relative to remarrying after your first life passed? Wow. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think I was young, so I was 22 and uh, I married again in three years. Okay. Um, and I was married for almost three years. So three years and three, um, I, I, I knew being young and wanting a family and uh, I knew I wanted to remarry, but uh, I, I found myself, you know, sometimes getting into relationships too quickly. Understood. And um, not taking time and to let myself heal. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of my journey is I didn't learn, I didn't experience enough healing uh, before I started getting into relationships. And so wow. these days I, I counsel uh, time, give it time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, you could, um, there's a lot of problems when there are two needy people who meet each other, right? Absolutely. They're kind of like heat seeking missiles that, <laughs> yes. yeah. that, that hit right. each other. And, um, and I think I, I made some mistakes along that line. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, but ultimately I did remarry and, and I was blessed. I, you know, I have, uh, three children from uh, that marriage and, um, uh, it was, um, one of them died, Joshua died yes. in 2001, yeah. um, but a great blessing to me, a lot, a lot to be grateful for, but it did mm -hmm. take some processing and some self-understanding. Yeah. Yeah. You got to move to some point. Of, I mean, you can't wait till you're healed totally because that never happens. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, right but, about you, that. but we do need to kind of get a sense of ourselves and our, and our sense of uh, who we are and, um, some kind of comfort level so yeah. that we don't burden the other person when we marry them. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah. That's true. I really feel that sense of uh, what you said about getting into relationships too soon. Uh, that's such a big danger because oh. you don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean you yeah, know. you're a little lost because what lost. you thought you were right in terms mm -hmm. of this partnership you had with, with the, with Linda and I had mm -hmm. with Sheila, that partnership, suddenly broke up and yeah. now I'm having to reorient my life a little bit. Yeah. Discover again who I am as a, as an unmarried person. You know, right. You know, right. who I was as a married person was one thing, but now I'm somebody a little different as an unmarried person. And yeah. How do, I, how do I live through that? Or how do I experience that and, and embrace the gifts that are a part of that? Uh, and, 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 and the fact that we had married, both of us had married young like that. Mm. It's like uh, at 19, what, what real single life did I have? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> to speak of, right? Uh, you, yeah, you, got, yeah. you got no real thing going on, you no career, yeah. really. Uh, no money, no real <laughs> anything going on. Yeah, and then you're married. And then now all of a sudden for me, I'm 50 and uh, you know, now I'm single. What does that mean? Mm. How does, this is weird. Yeah, I was, you know, I went to college when I was 16 and nobody would date me at college. I was too young. You know, they were all, I was like a little brother, you know, to a lot of people. And so yeah. finally, when I had somebody who would finally date me, I married them. Mm. <laughs> you weren't going to let that opportunity I wasn't going to, pass. I wasn't going to take any chances that nobody else was going to date me, you know, um, oh, um, seriously. Yeah. Well, brother, this has been a good conversation. Absolutely. I, I thank you Absolutely. for it. And I, I get a real sense of, that we both kind of in some way move from a mechanical relationship with God to a more authentic relationship with God, a more uh, yes. uh, relational kind of mm -hmm. understanding and mm -hmm. seeking God's goodness and trusting in God's goodness, even though we were very honest about our hurt and very honest mm -hmm. about our anger. And any final word you want to share here before we close? Uh, you know, I just, 
<laughs> since I've met you and over the years get gotten to know you here, there, and different things, I'm just amazingly blessed to be able to connect with you over all these years. It seems like uh, you couldn't get away. <laughs> you, you you left the Philadelphia area and uh, here, lo and behold, I find you down here when I come down this way. And I really appreciate your story. I really appreciate your honesty and uh, got tremendous respect for your ability and word. And uh, yeah. so I just wanted to say that because it means a lot to me to have somebody who has some shared experiences that uh, is willing to talk about it. And I think we can bless so many other people mm. who are dealing with, if not something exactly the same, just about the same. So I, I just, I'm so grateful to God for the people he's put in my life like you that allow me to continue on my trek uh, to knowing the Lord even better. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate that affirmation. And, and uh, I have a similar feeling for you, my brother. Um, I'm so happy to reconnect with you over these years and uh, have some of those memories. But, but now let's go a little deeper and um, get to know each other even better and maybe um, speak to the church um, as uh, two ministers of the gospel, just struggling to, to live out the gospel of Jesus in our lives. Trying to be real, trying to know him and keep on knowing him. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. God bless, brother. Thank you very much. And for those of you who are listening, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless.